In our next video, we're going to have a look at how to create arcs or how to create circles. So again, using this as the model, uh, we've got a few different instances where we might need to create a curved shape. Now, there's a few different ways to do that. Let's say, for instance, that we were just using straight lines to begin with. So we're drawing this kangaroo's head. So we've got a, a top and we've got a, a front nose and we've got a radial. We've got a semicircle, uh, a quarter circle, a radius. So we could draw a circle to represent that, or we could maybe use our fillet tool. So with our fillet tool, we need to know how big that radius was. So we could guess, or of course we could measure that as well. So if I was to use my line as a measuring tool, I tend to not use the measure tool, I just use the line instead. I could measure across and we could see that it's around about 80 millimeters represents the radius. So again, selecting both those lines, I could then go to my fillet tool. Again, we see that here, or edit, reshape, fillet tool. And I need to decide how big that is. So fillet would give us a radius. Type in 80, which is the radius. OK, and that will turn that into an arc. And when we're finished, that'll be a line, a line, and an arc. So that's one way of drawing an arc. How else could we draw an arc? Let's say we wanted to create an arc for the, the back of this kangaroo. Now this is a little tricky because we've got an arc turning into an arc and then it's sort of a straight line for a bit down here. Now if we're doing this for a building we want to be really exact and we'd be wanting to real, use real numbers. At the moment we're drawing a kangaroo so it's not all that important but let's try to understand the principles anyway. So ideally a true arc has one consistent radius, one consistent curve. We can draw a, an untrue arc or an ellipse and we'll do that later. But so here at the moment I want to try to find where this arc terminates. So we've got a continuing arc and then it turns into another arc. It's a bit hard to tell where that is. I'm just going to guess that it ends around about here. And then we've got a small segment which is a straight line. And then we've got another arc which ends around about here. So I could draw a line and then turn it into an arc by clicking on the midpoint and switching from insert new node to curve edge. And I could then add that, add a curve, increasing the radius until it looks right. So if I'm trying to copy something, that might be a clever way of doing it. Let's do that one more time on this other radius here. And maybe I didn't do that one perfectly, but we're starting to get that to look pretty good. Now, what's another way of doing this? If we want to make an arc, let's say we want to make this one here. To create a circle or an arc, first we need to know where the center point is. So I'm going to choose where I think this radius ends, where the circle ends, and I choose there. And when I intersect these lines, of course, that's tell telling me the midpoint or the center of the circle. So then instead of taking a line and editing it, we could start with the circle. Now in Archicad we have multiple ways to draw this. We have a circle, we have a, a three-point arc, and we have a tangential circle or arc. We also have the ellipses that we can draw as well. well now we're not going to touch on ellipses at the moment, we're just going to use the circle. So I could do a center point circle, starting from the center point. Click click, click, and that will define that arc. Now, of course, I could do the same thing and draw an entire circle if I wanted to. Click, click, and then all the way around, click, and that will create a circle. So that's one method. How else can I do that? I could do the same thing, but using a three-point method. So a three-point method is end, midpoint, and end. And again, I could draw a full circle, or I could just draw an arc or a semicircle, whatever it is I'm trying to create. So these are the methods that we can draw arcs or radiuses or circles in Archicad. Again, there's lots of different methods. So which one do we choose? We choose whichever one's the easiest for the application. Let's look at that one more time. Three point radius, one, two, three, and then finish that, terminate that wherever we 
think is the right place. And of course, we can delete any construction lines once we've done with that. Now, while we're on arcs, while we're on circles, we're creating this shape of the kangaroo at the moment. I'm just going to spend a little bit more time finishing the back of this off to show you the next part of this drawing. We've got a funny situation here where this arc is inconsistent. So it starts out about here, and then we see it's another radius about here. So it's getting a bit complicated. It's not as simple as it was before. And we'll do another one just to, to close it about there. Once we've got multiple shapes, it would be really frustrating to have to redraw that and try to get them all parallel. So how do we do this simply? Now, if we were to copy it, it wouldn't necessarily give us a parallel, perpendicular, evenly spaced line. So we have to use another method in Archicad. So the way that we do that is unfortunately a little bit hard to find and it's not necessarily here. We have an offset tool, but my preferred method to do this is if we go to Window, Palettes, down the bottom there is a palette called Control Box, which used to be very standard in the old version of Archicad, uh, but it's not anymore. And we can put this up in our own toolbar, so again, later on in a later video, I will teach you how to do this. But in this Control Box, we have relative construction methods. I'm going to change this to one that looks like Z's and that one is called the offset tool. And now if I select all these lines, use the offset tool and get the line or the arc tool, I'm going to magic wand. Magic wand is holding down the spacebar and what that's going to do is copy all of the things that are under the magic wand or in this case the things that I've selected. Click and that's going to allow me to offset evenly for all of those lines and arcs to create an even offset. In this case I'm going to guess that it's 115 millimeters maybe. 115, enter. And so now we've got two very very consistent lines and arcs. This one's grouped them all together by the, by the way that it worked. So now we've done both the inside and the outside of that kangaroo's back using lines and arcs and the offset tool.